welcome everybody back to Buford Pusser, the other story. Today we're going to begin to get into uh, the story and the fact that we need to discuss Pauline. She was a pivotal part of this story. You know, I began researching all this back in the 90s. I'd been in law enforcement. Uh, you know, I saw the movie Walking Tall, thought it was one of the best movies I'd ever seen. Maybe the production wasn't as great as it could have been, but... You know, the storyline was incredible. Now, I had no reason not to believe that the story was the true tale that they claimed it to be. However, you know, as I started researching my hero, I found a lot of flaws in the story. But as we're working our way up to the ambush, we need to discuss Pauline. We need to know who she was, what was going on with her, and uh, basically what the story was between she and Buford. So we'll start from the very beginning there. Pauline was a small town girl from Hayside, Virginia. She wanted to live a better life and Hayside didn't have much to offer so she moved to Chicago and that's where she met her husband, Roman Ironston Vance. Vance was a wrestler. He was known as Pete to friends and family. And after the two were married, Pauline became the mother of his two children Diane and Mike. Now in the movie Walking Tall, they showed that Mike was Buford's son, but that's not true. He was a stepson. It's been suggested that Pete Vance after a while became physically and psychologically abusive to Pauline, and that was why she was pregnant with yet another child, Karen Felicia, one that we didn't know about. Thanks to Dean Baldwin, we learned about her. Dean was Pauline's cousin. Pauline's family members believe it was the physical abuse that Pauline suffered from her husband, Pete Vance, that caused Karen to be born both physically and mentally challenged. Pauline and Pete soon divorced after Karen was born. It didn't take Pauline long to know that she wasn't going to be able to care for Karen. She required almost 24-hour care, and she had two other children that she had to make a living for now that she was a single mom. So, due to this, she made a painful decision and allowed two of her family members back in Hayside, Virginia, to adopt Karen. Pauline now had to make a living for her other two children, Diane and Mike. Now, I've heard stories that she worked as an exotic dancer, but I've never been able to verify that or find any proof whatsoever to support that. I was told by family members that she did work as a secretary and as a telephone operator during that time. Pauline would be at a Chicago night spot called the Buccaneer Club where she'd gone to see a concert by an Alabama performer named Vern Gosden. Gosden was an up-and-coming singer at the time, but he'd yet to meet the success that he would uh, have in the late 1960s. It was during this concert that she met Buford Pusser, who was a wrestler at the club. Buford and Pauline hit it off and it was a whirlwind romance. Pauline was six years older than Buford. Maybe it was true love, and maybe Pauline saw Buford as a means to help support her two children. And then, again, maybe, it was a bit of both. We'll never know. They continued to live in Chicago for a while, and Dewana was born there in 1961. It was at that time that Buford brought his family back to Adamsville, where he eventually became a patrolman and then chief of police of Adamsville. Now you know the next part of the story. Buford runs for the office of sheriff in McNary County. This is 1964. He gets elected. And things that with Buford and Pauline seem to go be going pretty well at that time. But I don't know if it was the new job, uh, a feeling of power. But something happened and Buford started seeing other women. And there were lots of them. Uh, there was Pearl. Sheila, Noma, uh, there's Rhonda, Joanne, and a lot of others, and one I like to call Lady A. Of course, this strained the marriage, and Pauline didn't know quite what to do. Both were said to be hitting night spots in both Jackson and uh, Memphis, often together and often not. 
this is when some people started to suggest that uh, Buford was physically abusing Paul Lane. If you enjoy these videos and would like to keep them coming, please hit like, comment, share, or subscribe. As if Buford seeing all these other women wasn't enough for Pauline to deal with, the other shoe was about to drop. That being that her daughter, Diane, would claim that Buford was molesting her. Diane would later tell her close friends, like a classmate in Jackson, and also a former Selmer police officer that she knew that had started working in Jackson. Now, of course, I understand that none of this can really be proven, especially after all these years. However, uh, this was about the time that uh, Diane moved to Memphis and lived with Buford's sister, Galia. Uh, now, Buford would tell stories that she was sent away because uh, she had become rebellious and was uncontrollable, that she was hanging out with the wrong crowd, that she was using drugs, writing bad checks on uh, his uh, bank account, all sorts of things like that. But at this point, you know, we have to wonder uh, if this story could be true. Now Pauline started making her plans to leave Buford. She started this process by sneaking her clothing from their home, wearing one set of clothing over another when she'd report to her job at Garen's each day, hoping that Buford wouldn't notice. Now once Pauline arrived at work, she'd take off the inner set of clothing stored away for safekeeping. Uh, a co-worker got to noticing that she was doing this every day and then noticed she had bruises on her arms that the clothing had hidden so well. And finally, you know, she decided to ask Pauline about it. And Pauline told her that she was planning on leaving Buford and she was having to sneak her clothes and other belongings out of the house. And, uh, you know, uh, it was one of those things where a lot of people didn't know that... Uh, there was a point in time where Buford and Pauline were separated, but one person that did know was TBI's Warren Jones. This takes us up to a night at the Old Hickory Grill when Buford and Pauline were overheard having an argument out in the establishment's parking lot. Pauline was said to be giving Buford pure hell over his womanizing and even confronted him about his corruption surrounding the, his taking payoffs. Maybe she went a step too far when she threatened to report his corruption to the TBI. I say this because Buford was overheard telling Pauline that if she tried that, she wouldn't live to see the light of day. Now this takes us right up to a point uh, just before the ambush. Now, all of these stories that I've mentioned today individually don't really tell you much, but combined they begin to put together a pretty powerful story. Now, that's where we will end this video for the day. Now, I will say that uh, uh, here in a couple of days, I'm going to have another video out. It's going to be excerpts of a conversation that I had with James Opal Gray. I hope you'll find that interesting. And in the meantime, I would really like for everyone to put their comments uh, on this about what you think, what your thoughts are, where you think it's all headed, uh, just whatever you want to write. But at any rate, um, I'll leave it there for right now. And just remember, as Buford would say, right is right, wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm.